the secret to making better videos. I'm not going to tell you to buy more gear or to buy my LUTs. Just offer simple advice to help you grow as a filmmaker. It all revolves around this one word, intent. Making intentional choices in filmmaking is by far the most important skill to master. At all times when I'm filming, I'm asking myself, why am I doing this? Why am I shooting on this lens? Why am I moving the camera? Why am I framing the shot this way? Learning the motivation behind all these questions is the biggest secret to growth. I've identified five areas that I deem to be the most important. First, we've got camera movement. Does pushing the camera forward take you closer to the next scene? Or does it stress the importance of a moment, taking us into someone's mind or memory? Does pulling back physically take you out of the scene? Or does it reveal something new and important in it? Do you revolve around your subject because it looks cool? Or do you want to create context of the surroundings? Movement that is not motivated can quickly become a distraction. What is the relationship between the camera moving and my subject? Tracking a subject over distance puts the focus on both the subject and their surroundings. Simply tracking their movement from a fixed point with a pan or a tilt puts more emphasis on the subject. Moving the camera in the opposite direction to the movement of your subject generally flows better than going in the same direction. Moving the camera is a tool to tell better stories. If you learn how these movements translate, you won't even have to think about it. You'll just know. Next, we've got framing. How you frame a shot can speak volumes about the feeling of a scene. The rule of thirds guides your attention to where the subject is looking. The opposite of that creates discomfort, something you want your viewer to experience with your subject. Centering your subject emphasizes importance. Leading lines is making use of elements in your environment to create a visual pathway to your subject or focal point. Something as simple as framing next to a wall or using street lights. Anything that is natural in the scene that will draw your eyes to your subject. A Dutch angle is used to communicate uneasiness or tension. Point of view makes you feel part of the scene, experiencing the moment through the eyes of your character. Framing your subject with a natural frame in the scene. Just like leading lines, this can draw the attention to your subject, but also have the ability to communicate other emotions, like in this case, the feeling of loneliness. If you approach every single frame with this in mind, your storytelling will drastically improve. Gear selection. Gear choice can have a massive impact on the outcome of your film. Arguably, the most important aspect here is the choice between gimbal and handout. It's easy to be swept up by the dynamic movements one can achieve with a gimbal, but does it actually complement your scene? Would a shaky camera perhaps communicate more emotion? I made an entire video about this topic, so if you're still figuring this out, check the link in the description below. Deciding to rig your camera up or shooting bare. I always have a motivation for why I do it. A heavier camera rig gives me more stable handout footage and allows me to use essential accessories like a monitor and a focus motor, unless I actually don't need that stuff, like when I really need to be fast and agile without hassling with extra setups. What's the point of using an FX6 when I need the agility of an FX3 or A7S3? Lenses. A close-up on a wide lens makes you feel like you're right there with someone in their face where a long lens makes you feel like you're observing from a distance. When I'm shot listing, I'm intentionally choosing the lenses even before I arrive on set. Most of the time, I actually use the lens I chose and that's why it's important to learn the feeling you get from different focal lenses. When I'm doing a recce or walking blindly into a scene, I rarely put on lenses on my camera to see which one will work because I already feel familiar with how these focal lengths operate. Drones, simply another word for distraction. Now with this, I'm not saying they don't have a purpose, but there's not a single tool out there that will distract you more. When I first started flying drones, I was so captivated by the new perspectives that came with it. My films quickly started looking like drone videos instead of balanced stories. I see the same happening now with FPV. It just looks so damn cool that it's easy to get carried away with just one tool. It's not always about how much you shoot with it, but also when. When the light is on fire and you only have a few minutes to capture a scene, what will you spend it on? Getting maybe one usable drone shot or capturing an entire sequence with your camera? I've paid the price dearly in this department, which is why I can confidently say to be mindful when taking out your drone. And when you do take it up, ask yourself what you want to tell with the shot. The goal of a drone shot is to give perspective to your location and where your subject is situated. It's a tool to create context, not to tell a story with. When you save your epic drone shots for the right moment in the edit, it has way more impact. Music is the foundation of an edit. 
If the foundation is without purpose or intent, your viewer won't connect. For me, first prize is always to find music even before I film the production. Every time I actually use a track chosen before production, the edit turned out amazing because the pace and length of each shot could be filmed with the music in mind. Although I don't always have a track before filming, I still search for a track before I actually start the edit. With music, it's important to find a track that complements the energy and emotion in a scene. The intensity of the music should never overshadow the energy created by the cuts and movements. In the same way, you don't want to have intense energy and not the relevant music to match it. I always look for something that can take me on a journey with various swells and dips and hopefully a climax to finish. If I don't find it in one song, I try to create a custom track from multiple songs that have a similar feeling. On that note, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Musicbed. When I first tried the platform, the purpose was simple, to find music for my clients. 10 years down the line, it has evolved into something much bigger. I no longer see it only as a licensing platform, but a source of inspiration, a breeding place for creativity. Even when I don't need music for a project, I spend a lot of time simply listening to the music because a good song has the ability to put ideas and images into my head. Ideas that often materialize into entire projects, all because of a song. One of my biggest compliments over the years has always been, wow, we love the music, who is the artist? As a creative person with the desire to be unique, this alone is reason enough to carry on. With so many options, I've always been able to produce content that stand out. Before I had any subscribers on YouTube, I had two of my videos go viral, and they were both driven by incredible music. The engagement I got on those videos led me to actually pursue creating more content for YouTube. So in a way, the music played a role in why I'm talking to you right now. Musicbed is something that I can wholeheartedly recommend, but don't just take my word for it. Take your projects to the next level with Musicbed and hear the difference for yourself and sign up for a free account. Use my code at checkout to receive one month free when you purchase an annual subscription. Number five, frame rates. Being intentional about frame rates is something that I only got a grip on in recent years. A common misconception is that shooting everything in a high frame rate is safer because then you can choose which shots you want to slow down, right? Wrong. There's a massive difference between a shot taken at 25 frames per second and one at 100 frames per second not slowed down, with 25 FPS looking more natural and 100 FPS looking choppy and digital. The only time this is acceptable is if you want to do speed ramping, but here the majority of the shots are still being slowed down. 25 FPS is a no-brainer for shots that require audio, but it's also the only way to portray the real speed of your subject and gives the viewer an accurate feeling of things as they are making you feel more present in that moment. So ask yourself this, do I want a viewer to see things as they are? I also choose 25 FPS when I'm shooting a wider scene where there aren't any big movements and slow motion will make it feel too static. Higher frame rates can easily come across as more cinematic just because it looks cool. The problem here is when you overuse it. When your entire video is in slow motion, it can quickly become stale. In my short film Perseverance, I only did three shots in slow motion. First with the blades of the helicopter starting up because it creates anticipation. Second, when we push in towards our actor as he reflects on a memory. And then one more time when he punches the bag. When you save your slow motion shot for a special moment, it has way more impact because you create contrast as you transition from natural speed. The pace of your film should also determine the frame rate you choose. If you want an all slow-mo video, you better have a script or the right music to complement it. If you're going for fast cuts, having slow-mo shots are sometimes too slow to show an entire movement. And that can be super frustrating to watch and even more frustrating to edit. Being intentional in these five areas might not come overnight, but starting right now will guarantee better results going forward. As always, comments, drop them down below and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.